Ooh. Matt's got something he wants to say to you, TJ. <sighs> God damn it. Why? Every time. Are you recording, Tom? <laughs> yes. You absolute <laughs> shitbags. Oh, right. Welcome it's hard back to do it to. On... Sorry. <sighs> I'm interrupting you already. It's hard to do it on Riverside because it comes up with a timer. I'm going to kick your ass, Rob. Seriously, going <laughs> to kick your ass. Welcome back to the show where two blokes are joined by. Two guests. Hello. And yeah, along with me and Rob, we have our two guests. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Heyo, Soranji here from Pint of Cthulhu. And myself, Matt. Again, Pint of Cthulhu, producer, editor, and pretty much everything else. Ah, uh, so I can guarantee you with this person, you do a YouTube video when it comes to the credits that no one else ever does. It's your name over and over and over and over again yeah. as the credits go <laughs> on. Constantly your name. <laughs> best let, boy director I let rss do it all <laughs> nice yeah. nice okay so yeah we've got some guests today we guested on a part of cthulhu quite a while ago now before christmas where we we joined in the game and we had a hell of a lot of fun i gotta say i still yeah. can't believe that i managed to get my bonus points by just saying look just sign the bit of paper and then i'll fuck off and i won't shoot you <laughs> so hey, <laughs> i was really happy and if you've got no idea what i'm talking about if you check the metadata on this podcast you'll find a link to that episode as will you find a link to anything else we talk about today uh rob do you want to run through what we're doing today We've got lots of fun stuff, so I didn't write it down when you told me, so now I've got to try and remember. So we've got a game to play, we've got a Do You Remember, we have got a and d scenario that I've written for us all to play. Can I just point out, guys, special as well, rules. Rob wrote this D&D thing, I haven't read it, he sent it to me to read, and I said, well no, surely it would be much more fun if I had no idea about this, so it's, I've got no idea yeah. what it is either. I'll explain. It's not like you'd normally play because I've it's scripted, apart from some of the roles, and I'll explain it when we get there. Uh, what else mm-hmm. we got? Kid show knockout, and I've been sent loads of questions by some other guys that listen to your podcast, so they'll be interspersed with some questions that I pick randomly from this list. And just to make it a, a fairly typical episode, we will be throwing in one subject this week, because we normally talk about at least one thing, and this week we're going to be talking about remasters versus remakes, but for films, because we spoke about it with games last week, uh, oh god damn it, Yay. last episode, not last week, <laughs> one day I will get this right, um, no, you won't. but yeah, last episode we talked about remakes versus remasters with games, and I thought, let's very quickly talk about films, uh, so... I think we're going straight into a quiz, and um, Rob hasn't told me I'm meant to be playing some sort of piece of music at the moment. You are playing a game that I like to call um, Who's That D and D. Got to play the got to play the intro. You've got to play the intro. <laughs> play the intro. <laughs> I am, oh, it's on preview. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on preview a minute ago. It was on live. <laughs> Hang on. Right. Intro. Who's that D&D monster? Fucking <laughs> 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 The high quality editing of our, our podcast. Would you like to hear that again? Yeah, yes, of course we would. Absolutely. <laughs> Who's that D&D monster? <laughs> okay as you know i'm a fan of pokemon and i'd had to squeeze it in here somewhere but basically i'm gonna ask you i'm gonna name 10 D D monsters so monsters that are in the D D universe and you're gonna have to tell me are they really a D D monster or are they a load of bollocks did i just make it up and all three of you are gonna do it and Extra points if you can tell me the type of monster is it is. Is it a fiend? Mm. Is it a humanoid? Is it an animal? That's an extra point. So, but really, all I want is to see you tell me whether this is a real monster or not. So what you've done, Rob, is just like when we interviewed Ben Baker, you've set me up to score zero, haven't you? <laughs> and- I don't know. <laughs> Some of them, I think, are quite... Obvious that I might have made them up, I think. But then, (laughs) yeah, I made them up, so there we are. Right, okay then. Would you like your first one? Of course. So number one, 
The Shambling Mound. Jay, do you think that is a real D&D monster? Or do you think I just made that up? I vaguely remember hearing about this or something like it before, so I reckon it's D&D. You think it's D&D, okay. Matt? Mm-hmm. Do you yeah, think the I, Shambling I think, Mound yeah, is real? I, I think it's a real one. Okay, I'm trying to put these scores in my phone, <laughs> so it's quite difficult. Oh, and yeah. TJ, do you think the Shambling Mound is real or not real? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to follow the lead. I'm going to say it's real. Insert the audio clip that you deleted of everyone cheering. Oh, Yay! Uh, what, you mean <laughs> this one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And we so, bonus <laughs> points to the first person to tell me what type it is. Hey, what no, are the types? Necro- oh. I'm not going to list you all the types. There's too many of them. Just Necro- guess. Would it be ne- like necrotic, undead? Nope. Jay is out. Rock based. <laughs> nope. Elemental. This is all according to D&D Beyond, okay? Their own website. Is it elemental? What did you say, Matt? Nope. It is plant. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Mound. <laughs> well, you'll get a point anyway. Shambling, shambling, shambling mound. Okay. Question two Gelatinous cube. Yeah, that's yeah. D&D. Yeah, yeah. We've got two yeses. I think even I can say that one's real because I think it featured in Wayne's World 2 at some point and it's been joked about on The Simpsons and everything else under the sun. Like we have a new game called Xantar. Mm. Xantar is a gelatinous cube that eats warriors in a medieval village. And every time it eats a chieftain, you ascend to a higher level. The beauty part is you can't get to the next level, so the kids keep coughing up quarters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> gelatinous cube eats village. I think it's terrific. You know, I know nothing about video games, and I found what you just said riffing. So it's got to be That's real. That's right. Yeah, it's real. Anyone want to be the first one to tell me? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what type it is, according to D&D Beyond? Is it aberration? No. Nope. Beast? Nope. Construct? That is one, but that's not this one. <laughs> uh, I honestly don't know. Have you got know. them up? Have you got the D&D list up? Yeah. <laughs> You can get the yes. D&D to list up. Oh. I'll let you go to D&D Beyond to get the list up, but don't type in the names of the creatures. That seems like cheating to me. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I, I hadn't even thought about looking it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at... Um... Don't type the creature in when I name it, because that is cheating. No, fine. But I'll let you have the list. The list is just written across oh, the top. Uh, I don't think you should let us do this, um, because one of them has a picture of the Delirious Cube as the type example. <laughs> oh, Really? Yeah. Oh, is it? oh it's yes. Well, Matt, Matt can't look yet. Matt's the only one. Matt is on said. his phone as we speak. <laughs> what do you think it is, Matt? Come on. I have no idea. I'm even looking on the page for it. I can't see it. Uh, it I don't think up. we should be able. Yeah, it's it's, it's an ooze. ooze. Yeah, and it is literally the picture ah, for D&D Bonus ooze. silhouette. But yeah. that is it. Uh, I, th- I think we shouldn't be allowed to do this. Maybe. Okay, then we're not doing it. Jay has spoken. <laughs> Everyone the hell screens off. Not remember that. Because I didn't know ooze was a type. <laughs> it's very specific. How many oozes can there possibly be? I think there's a few. <laughs> okay, right. Question number three. Animated broom. The animated broom. Jay, what do you think? I don't think that's one, because that seems like it would be an item. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go... S- no. I'm 50-50 on that, but I'm going to have to say no... Oh, screw it. I'm going to say it's real. And TJ says it's real. Well, I'm glad to tell you it is real. Oh. Well done, TJ. No, I don't get a bonus point. So TJ gets first shot at what type it is. Enchanted? Because he got it right. I don't no, even know what the types are. you said it a minute ago. Oh, really? It's a construct. <laughs> construct. It's a construct, yeah. God I'm not going to give it to you two because you two got it wrong. So. Oh. <laughs> right, number four. Gobbler. Number four, Gobbler. Who's going to TJ go first this time? False. Not real. Not Something real. that you we've discussed previously. You think I've... <laughs> 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 that one, then. <laughs> Matt, what do you think? Yeah, no. I'm going to say false. You're going to say false, Jay? Say false as well. You say false as well. Well, well done, everyone. You were it was false. I made that up. I'm it just up. giving the, the quickest applauses now. <laughs> yeah. Number five, the flail snail. 
Uh, yep, absolutely yeah. a true real D&D model. Jay well, says that true. true. Matt. I'll take Jay's word for it. Yeah, uh, the fact that, Jay, you lit up then as soon as you I heard that I love the one. flail snail, okay? I adore her. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to make sure Jay goes last in the future ones. Uh, what type <laughs> oh, is it? What type? Jay, you go first. What type do you think uh, it is? Abomination? Or aberration, rather? No. No. You two? Have a go. A beast or something? I just want... Hold on. Yeah. I don't know if I can... Yeah, the snail. TJ? Uh, uh, aberration? No, apparently it is an elemental. Huh. Jay, make sure you write that down. He's fighting one of those now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but okay. for reference of why I lit up, this... Ah, fuck. Why, why do images hate me? <laughs> I was going to try and show you what he looked like, but... Apparently my life is pain and only pain. Uh, I, to be honest, the way my evening's gone, Jay, I feel that tonight. I absolutely feel that. Yeah, Where right. are we? What question am I on now? Um, okay, number six. Ready? Yep. Atticus Stuffington. Okay, well, you can start with me, and I'm saying that full stop is false. <laughs> okay, that's Atticus false. Okay. Stuffington. <laughs> Stuffington, yeah. Stuffington. That just sounds like a and d name of a character. Definitely not a monster, I don't think. They've got a list of names on there. I guess they're like bosses or like particular characters or something. Uh... So go on, Matt, what do you reckon? Mm, uh, false. False. I'm going to pick out it's false as well. False as well. Oh, I'm sorry to tell you all, but yes, yeah, false. Oh, oh uh, what a surprise. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> Number seven, a warbling Goliath. Matt True. first for the warbling Goliath. Real. True. If we've uh, got... Jay. Jay, true or false, the warbling Goliath. Matt said that with such confidence, but I cannot believe for a second that's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it's not, okay. I want it to be a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> CJ, I really is that want real? it to be real, so I'm going to say real. <laughs> okay, well, there's only one of you that's got any sanity here. I made it up because it's not uh, real. We need to make that like a t like a tavern name or something. The warbling Goliath. <laughs> yeah. Right, right over to uh, Hero right. Quest and create the warbling giant. Goliath. Goliath. Right. Sorry. Number eight. Froghamoth. Froghamoth. TJ first this time. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with true for that true it's far Jay? too original for something you could come up with i'm gonna say true there's a lot of beam off versions of things in D. &D. True. Yeah, true and matt which we can yeah true. of course you're all right i'm not i'm not clever tj um, what yeah, type man. is it then he's gonna say what type uh, beast it's not a beast it's aberration, aberration. It's not aberration. I know you two like saying Fae? it. It's not an aberration. I said abomination. <laughs> oh, did you? It's not a fae either. It's a monstrosity. Uh -huh. Right, two left, everyone. This is an exciting game, I know. Number nine is a Zugtomoy. Zugtomoy. Jay. Zugtomoy. False. False. Matt. I'm going to say true. Matt says true. I'm going to go false. And you're going to say false. The answer is true. <laughs> it's spelt Z U G G T M O Y. Zugtmoy. Interesting. Okay. And what does it yep. do? <laughs> what is it? What what kind of creature is it? What, um, Matt. Fay. It started with an F. It's a fiend. Ah. Uh. What is it? Okay. Last oh. one. How so how how different like... are the scores at the moment? Uh, they're close. They are close. One, two, aren't they? three, four, five, six. You've got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Matt's got six. One, two, three, four. And Jay's only got four. Oh no! Sorry, no sorry. Jay's got oh, six. Wait. TJ's got six. Matt's got four. Oh sorry. okay. <laughs> okay, I was going to say. Hang well, on a your camera order is different than the order on my uh, list here. Ooh. So it, this is basically between TJ and Jay. It's a beautiful lady. Be respectful, Matt. So, last one. Galazeth Prismari. Galazeth Prismari. TJ, you tell me. Galazeth Tismari. Uh, oh, 
God, uh, false. I'm going to go with it being true. Yeah, true. Uh, <laughs> what did you say, TJ? False. false. Okay, I've got a problem. Oh, um, what's your problem? <laughs> as always, I've ballsed up the quiz and I've said what it is, but not wrote the type. So now I don't know if it's true. <laughs> What did you say it was called? Galazeth. Galazeth. G A L A Z E T H. It is real because I can see it all yeah, filling up. Wicked. Prismari, there we go. It, oh, it exists, but. Yeah, it's... what type is it? Does it have a type? Oh, I didn't uh, type. you bamboozled us. It's from Magic the Gathering, but there is it's a Magic the... the Gathering module in DD, so it might also be uh, DD. Okay, oh, right. right. As I said, I took it from DD Beyond, so. Uh, right, so. I don't know if it is in DD, though, or if it's just a it Magic the Gathering be. one. Uh, yes, it is. It's in the Prismari College. It is there in. There we go. Eden. Oh well, well done, Jay, for winning. So that's Jay wins uh, seven points. And just, just, just to. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. Hang on. Sound effects, of course. Yay! And enough of that. One for you then, Rob. Uh, I've just got to work mm-hmm. out the pronunciation of this. Is Sape Nocknidop? <laughs> a real one or a false one? Uh, well, I mean, you just read it. <laughs> I'm going to say false. I think you just... <laughs> I have like... winding you up. That is Poddington Peas backwards. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Would you like one, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. Always. <laughs> Naya Lethotep. Naya Lethotep. Uh, Sounds like Imhotep. Go on, I'll say it's true. Yeah, more tech. It is. It's a Call of Cthulhu. I might be saying it slightly wrong, though. Well, it doesn't matter. I, I I could copy what you said, which is always a good start. And God, the people don't know some of my pronunciation. But Rob will know. So when we used to work at the pub together, I used to do the pub quiz. And mm-hmm. the number of times I'd get pronunciations wrong, and I would just pretty much down the microphone and say, I don't care if I've got the pronunciation wrong. Shut up. Was yeah, there's a, yeah, uh, a couple of teams that would always be like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, and my favourite one was, I do not support football. I hate football. My my football knowledge is Jurgen Klinsmann, and that's about it for Spurs. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm fairly dated, let's put it that way. And I had no idea that Thierry Henry is Thierry Henry. I pronounced it as Thierry Henry. So there you go. <laughs> Thierry Henry, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it might be I ironic it, because he's not very hairy. I say how I see it, okay? If it's going to be spelt Henry, then it's fucking Henry. TJ? Yes. Play the music. Who's that D&D monster? <laughs> <laughs> chaos. Right. Absolute chaos. Right, so you guys, a pint of Cthulhu, are a... TTRPG podcasts. Am I correct in saying that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I've got some questions here. Uh, I'm going, who shall I go with first? Hmm. Questions, questions, questions. Okay. Simon um, from Who Takes Social Podcast has asked, what is your favourite TTRPG? Good question. Ooh. Hmm. Not to put you on the spot, of course. <laughs> no. <laughs> What does I... it taste like? <laughs> That's what he asked us, wasn't it? Randomly at the start of his interview yeah. with oh, us. Oh, God, yes, it, yeah, it did. <laughs> I'd forgotten all about that. So I'm fairly basic. I've tried a few TTRPGs, but d d is still my favourite just because of how much time fans and other creators have sunk into it. It's so versatile these days. You can mm. make anything out of d d hmm. You know what? I'm going to have to say, potentially, Cthulhu Dreamt. However, Salvage Union oh. recently... Yeah, you forgot about that, didn't you? I forgot about all the... like. I thought I was on the thing mainstream. No. Because no, no, I no, do you have can choose a anything you fondness want. for both Salvage Union and Doomsong. Oh, yeah, Doomsong was fun. I just have to say, it has to be... If, we're going to go, if I'm going to be honest, it's going to be more indie side of things. I'm going to say Cthulhu Dreamt. Purely because... Um, I mean, we got Reed out of that, who does all our music. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cthulhu Dreamt. I'm going to say my favourite TTRPG to like play or run would be D&D, but my favourite overall is Doomsong. The lore is immaculate. Mm. 
And is there a particular style that you prefer or are you pretty kind of open to any style of a tabletop or is there, is it more fantasy? Is it more, no. I don't know. In fact, you know what? I couldn't even tell you what all the types are out there. I mean, considering we've played like f- typical fantasy D and D, we've gone from like noir, C- uh, Call of Cthulhu, Mecha, um, horror, it, anything that's fun. As long as it's entertaining and fun, it really couldn't. I couldn't give a toss what f- uh, genre it comes under. Yep. But I kind of I would say that probably falls down to the people that you're playing with as well. Because I know, we, me, me and Rob, I mean, my entry into this was Hero Quest a few months ago. And uh, before that, I'd maybe, maybe kind of played a little bit of kind of 40k, so the old Warhammer sort of stuff, many, many moons before. But that was more because I just wanted to paint them and got dragged into playing games. But uh, yeah, Hero Quest for us was brilliant fun because we just, it, we were having a laugh doing it at the same time. So it wasn't just about the game. We were having a, a really good kind of friendship group doing it. So does that kind of fall to the same with you? Would you say that even if a game's enjoyable, if you're not playing it with the right people, you don't enjoy oh, it as much? Definitely. If you're playing with people that aren't there to like fuck around and find out, have a bit of fun, then yeah, it's going to be stale as anything. You've got to have the right people to enjoy it. You have that click. And you just got to mess around. Yeah. You know, it's a game at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you're not min-maxing or getting everything 100%. As long as you're just enjoying yourself, who cares? I mean, uh, moving kind of adjacent to that, regarding Kim, Kimber's question for you, how you all met, you know, the, how did you come to play with the particular people you're playing with now? Well... Matt kind of just headhunted me out of nowhere. Um, I'd watched, I think, some of your streams on Twitch, and I'd streamed a little bit, and you'd popped into chat, and we hadn't really talked outside of that, and just popped in like, "Hey, I'm getting a podcast together. Do you want to play a TTRPG?" <laughs> nice. A little bit so of a he, funny story. He popped in your t- in your DMs, basically. Is what <laughs> yeah, I hadn't met anyone <laughs> else at all from the podcasts uh maybe i'd talk to them through a sea of thieves stream or something but yeah capital i think too and you probably spoke to the most i'm not gonna lie when jay first joined in chat i had the distinct idea that it, uh, <laughs> it wasn't jay I, I had the idea that it was a little indian man from the main <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. told me this before <laughs> always funny uh, as, as soon as i talked to like as soon as i talked to jay i was like Oh, okay. <laughs> Completely opposite to what I thought. Surprise. Hey. Excellent stuff. Uh, go on, one more question for me, actually, just because it sporadically popped into my brain. Have you done an episode of the podcast where you were really excited to invite the people on, you were looking forward to it, and it turned out they were just complete lemons? Now, don't feel you don't need to tell names or anything like that. We, we has shouldn't. there been an episode where it's been. But this we is both not good. know what we're thinking about. Um, so without getting you can too say specific, us. you're allowed to say us. That's fine. Uh, no. no, there was to be as vague as possible. We've had a lot of guests on Pint of Cthulhu, like a couple dozen now. I think, Matt, Fantastic. maybe more. And um, a few. Yeah, we've had quite a lot, so this should be vague enough. There was one person who came on to run their small TTRPG, and it was a shit show. It was absolutely god awful terrible. Um, That's everything not what went I was wrong. Thinking about. Oh, you... oh, who... oh, Ooh. was it? Ooh. Ooh, gossip. Ooh, tea. Ooh, okay. There was someone who. It was. Hang on, I'm going to message you their name and can you tell me who the fuck you're thinking of? Because now I want to know. <laughs> I was thinking about the interview that we got the idea wrong. Oh, that was our fault, though. That wasn't on them. So, uh, actually, this will be funny to tell uh, you two, because we thought someone... W- we oh. didn't know what, what a graphic designer was. So oh, yes. Matt yes, Jay, thought, I agree. Yeah, Matt thought they were an artist and had a bunch of, like, artist questions, and yeah, they were not an artist. Oh, they no. were not an artist. They were a graphic designer, which is slightly different, and they didn't have... Like, all the questions were wrong for who they are. We didn't know yeah, what their job was. that was on us, not on oh. them. Um, you did a you full-on could... BBC News interviewing the taxi driver rather than the politician. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we fucked up. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Is it, can we listen the, to it? 
Yeah, it's on. It's up. <laughs> you still released it. <laughs> yeah. No, because we ended up having a good chat anyway. But you can hear the exact moment of oh Oops. shit. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point in the interview, and if this person, they probably won't still watch our stuff because we've fucked up. But if they are, I am so sorry for putting my foot directly down my own throat by uh, saying that I could obviously see it wasn't your art and that you told me it was. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 oh That's no. Rough. Okay, so last week we spoke about, not last week, for fuck's sake, (laughs) last (laughs) episode, we spoke about remasters and remakes on games. And I think we fell on the general consensus that remasters of games for a game that you're really waiting for or you loved is the best option because you're going to get pretty much what you hope or you hope you're going to get pretty much what you had back when you first had it. So for me, Tomb Raider, the remasters are brilliant. They haven't improved the graphics that much compared to the old one. It's enough that it's really noticeable, but really it's maybe a generation and change and not much more. But it plays on modern hardware and I enjoy it just as much as I make the original. Now, the reason that this came to mind was because someone sent me something earlier where Max Payne is being remade, not remastered. So Max Mm -hmm. Payne 1 and 2 are being turned into a single game, and it's a remake by Remedy. And, of course, that was a a concern, and that's a concern we'll talk about another time whenever we see kind of screenshots of it. And that then made me think about films. So has anyone got, first of all, a remake film that they actually really like? Dune. June. Yep. Okay, fair enough. Run me through it. Because I know there's the original, which is long, and then you've got the new one, which is super long. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think they just added a bit more into it. Obviously, they haven't completely followed the book as, as well as any film does. But updated graphics, updated visuals, it looks more believable. I mean, if you look at the personal suit shield things that they had before, it's all, like, blocky and... Yeah. You know, but whereas now they actually look how they're described, like a slight shimmer across the face or something like that. Corridor Digital did a video, didn't they, on how they did it originally? That's the one I was talking about. That's a really good video, yeah. I, I, th- I mean, it's a product of the time it came out, isn't it? Yeah. And the, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, the, the, the technology that was there. I... I in thinking of what's what I'd rather have remakes or remasters. I I kind of feel like even though that's a really good one that is genuinely a really good one. I think that if you're remaking a film, I don't think any of the actors who were in the first one should still be alive. That's the kind of time period I feel like you should go. I've heard that there was rumors at one point they were going to remake the Lord of the Rings films. Hey. So I, I don't want that at all. I do not. I, Lord of the Rings How? is my favourite film series Please. of all time. I do not Please want them not to remake, remake it. <laughs> yeah. Especially with rubbish. Rings of Power out right now. Absolutely oh. not. I don't want yeah. to see a Lord of the Rings in that quality downgrade that, that's quite shocking to hear when you think how successful those three films were why would you i mean introducing us to cinema to um the different frame rates for filming that weren't usual for the time the uh, just all of the, well, the things it, introduced, the it just doesn't make sense well, Weta were uh, like pioneers of the cgi technology they invented what all these guys are using because of those films, and they're still doing great. <laughs> like it just it seems like an unnecessary thing to be doing, and they won't do it right, and they'll mess with it too much. And even like I think that doing them up to like four K, which is what they have done, yeah, and releasing all of the kind of cut stuff and you know and adding it all back in, that's enough. They look mm. wicked, those films in 4K. Absolutely brilliant. And I, lo- I really prefer the longer ones that are that they've redone. I think that there is not a single film that actually like hit it big and is a pop culture icon that should be remade for the sake of quality 
like I don't think the sake of like CGI instead of props or anything should ever be done. Mm. I think if you want to look for a good film to remake, pick one that was good but had like obvious feelings you can fix. Don't pick something that was incredible. Yeah. You're just gonna fuck it up. Dude, a, a great example is The Thing. We've spoke about this before, TJ and I. Yes. The remake of The Thing is bloody dreadful. And I've said we've said this before, they have actually filmed it practically, the new one, and then overdid all of the practical effects with CGI. And it looks what so awful. The film is terrible. Whereas the original is so good with all the practical stuff. So, oh my God, how many times have I said in my life that practical effects win? And even going back to where we're, we're the most geeky with Star Trek, you look at the difference between the even the TV series and the films where they've got practical effects, so you've got a real physical Starship Enterprise on screen versus the later series and things where they've done it with CGI. Everything CGI, I don't know why, they, especially when it's space, has to be shiny. I don't know why, yeah. but everything's got to be shiny, shiny, shiny. Yet when you've got the practical effects things, I guess the reason it looked real is because technically it was real. It's right there in front of the camera in 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 reality. So it always looks so much better. And then when coming to the thing, there was just no requirement, was it, to kind of change any of it. The practical effects in the thing are some of the best out there. Um mm. I mean, even look at things like Brain Dead, talking about Peter Jackson from Lord of the Rings. The practical effects in that are just absolutely brutal, and they'd be ruined if you went down the route of doing it kind of CGI now. What do you think about, like, say they redid The Matrix, as an example? Well, they have, There's been talk they? about them redoing... Like, have no, they like remaking, remaking, making. So the, the new Matrix I feel that's film, a sequel... I think it's a sequel. They say it's a sequel, yeah, it's a but it's, it, it's not. It's it's one of these films that they're basically trying to re-kickstart the storyline by going back and doing the first film how they wanted it, but couldn't in the first place. And I disagree with any of that. I hate they it. They were perfect. If you're going... Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, the second and third films were ropey, to say the least, but the first mm. film... As long as it is, is still a good film. There's just no need to kind of try and reinvent the wheel. If you're going to... And I've said this about Marvel, and I'm sure I've said this before on the, the podcast before. With Marvel and with DC, I would rather them not just rehash... So, look, we've got X-Men 1, 2, and 3. Then we've got X-Men Juniors. Then we've got various other X-Men films. Why not just... Pick out of all the hundreds of graphic novels that exist a random story and run with it. Don't just keep going back and going, mm. okay, look, we've got Spider Man 1, 2, and 3. Now we're going to have Spider Man with Toby Maguire, not Toby Maguire, whoever the next one was. <laughs> and now, now we're going to have Spider Man yet again. It just, I hate that. There's just no need for it. Just go and choose a different graphic novel. Then you can change the actors if you want to, because no one will care, because it's a completely different story that doesn't link to anything. Yeah. If you want to one out of left field here, I've got, I've got two two to talk about, but one was Tron. Yeah. Because then you had Tron yeah. and then Tron Legacy, which again, all right, it wasn't a remake, but it was... They're trying to revitalise the... Sort of. Yeah. So from what I understand on that, Tron Legacy should have been made many years ago, but they the studios never did it. So they instead did it now, and now there's another sequel coming up. Um and yeah, another sequel that's going to follow on from Legacy. And I've got Ooh. to say, I thought Legacy was pretty good. I liked it. it. A lot of people I've hated it. it, but I liked it. Yeah. The second one. Now this never got remade, but it was talked about. Rocky Horror. Don't touch Rocky Horror. Oh, Leave no. Rocky Horror as it oh, is. There was plans budget up. for it to be remade. However, it got so shat on, I think they decided to cancel. Could you imagine the kind of shit it would stir up if Sweet Transvestite got redone? <laughs> it would just... No it one would like that. It, it won't be, be the dreadful. Rocky Horror Show. It will be completely different. The story will be completely different because people will be changing it left, right and centre. Um, oh, if you want to talk about remakes, hang on. S sorry, like this, the Avatar remake. The, do you, the, the, the new, one. new one that's on right now. Yeah. We just watched, we're halfway through the first episode before we started recording this. Oof. 
Man. Is it no good? No, because you know, I was saying how Sweet Transistor would probably be fucked up and changed. Yeah. Uh, mm. They've released a press thing saying they're going to remove um, any sexism from the Avatar show. Oh, that boy. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, the entire yes. plot of like two, three different characters is <laughs> based on that. Yeah, they're kind of. And the whole plot um, is them overcoming it and not being like that anymore. Yeah. There's like so, several episodes where key characters are introduced that have that baked into the plot. Mm. You see, if you're not going to be brave enough to make a show or a film that has already got a lot of lore, a lot of story behind it, if you're not prepared to follow it, don't do it. Yeah. If it's um, beloved, you have to, man. Yeah. Mm. I mean, one of my favourite all-time films is Short Circuit. Love it. <gasps> no, Love Johnny Five. Mal. And they have been <laughs> threatening to remake that. And the storyline that they released that if they find, a, uh, as I think they've tried to start two or three times now, but the storyline is a young boy comes across a robot in at night who has escaped from a, a facility. It's like, why change it? It doesn't need it. It's one of these films, again, practical effects, it looks bloody awesome, but it, it just didn't need it? fixing. Okay, so one of the characters was banned from a country due to his portrayal of their race. And yes, <laughs> no it, idea. it was <laughs> only a few years ago that I realized he isn't, he is actually a white man. I'm gonna, you're hold the my one who up. told me, you told me, I had no idea. So, yeah, I can for that, fine. Um, but okay, here's another weird one for you the Robocop remake, yeah. Hmm. I'm in two minds about it, as I enjoyed it, but as a separate film. If you just said this wasn't Robocop and that they'd done a little bit of a change of the story and made it something different, so yeah, okay, it's going to be a rip-off of Robocop, but not give it the Robocop name, I'd probably have enjoyed it more. All right. But um, the Judge, first Judge, Robocop so say, is Judge just Judge wonderful. Dredd. Yeah, Judge Dredd did it as well, didn't they? Yes. But, but that was a okay. good film. Yeah, that was good. The, the, yeah, the new Judge Dredd with Carl Urban mm -hmm. absolutely pisses all over. <laughs> um, Sylvester, Sylvester Sloan going, I am the law! You <laughs> That's know, a decent impression, too, to be fair. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, it, it's a cheesy film, and I love that version. Don't get me wrong. I, love, I think it's a 1995 film. I love that film. But the Carl Urban modern Dredd oh. film is brilliant. <laughs> Rob, you like this one, Willy Wonka. Oh, oh stop it! <laughs> <laughs> well, not only have they remade it, they've now that. done a prequel. Right? It's a prequel to the new one. Yeah. Oh, so, so I they... thought it was another remake. I thought they remade it twice. No, no, no. So they a... remade it with Johnny Depp, and then the new one is a prequel. So this is well, he's not a pedo killing a dickhead yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... The original Willy Wonka is far better than any of them. The Johnny Depp one is just creepy, and yeah. I haven't watched Wonka yet. But, Rob, you should somewhat like it because it's a musical. Yeah, I love musicals, so I didn't realise it was a musical until I saw some kind of making of things randomly on YouTube, which I very quickly skipped. Why but did I they? did and notice the Johnny... some of them were singing. Why no, did Johnny, it, the Johnny Depp remake add a plotline about his father being an evil dentist? I'm not actually I, sure if that's from the original Roald Dahl book, though. I swear it's not. I don't think they give Wonka backstory. I think they have the I glass elevator stuff is. instead. You know, I haven't read it since probably junior school, so Same I honestly yeah. couldn't tell you. So um, my my biggest question is still always going to be, why the fuck does he have a scary tunnel? <laughs> I A lot of it I've blanked out, <laughs> and only this would be able to get it out of my head. I I remember that tunnel, and I remember all the murder of the children. <laughs> I remember the the purple blowy up thing, and I didn't remember all the children were awful. And the slave labour. Yeah, all the children were awful. Umpa Loompas are weird. I hated the old man who was such a lazy git and was in bed the whole time. <laughs> Just Insurance yeah, fraud. so much of it I didn't I didn't like. Yeah, but that, that tunnel. That's yeah. fair mm. enough. Um, a terrible remake. I can categorically say was awful was total recall 
it was. I know I've seen it. I, I know I've seen, I've seen it. Colin yeah. Farrell playing Colin the main Farrell's character, in it. and yeah. they changed the story. They just ch- up, up, and absolutely changed the story to it. You can't beat that classic Arnie film, and uh, yeah, I Is would that say the one with the three boobs. That's the one with the three booby lady. Yes, that's the oh, one. Yes. He's like, ah, uh, 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 not enough eye pop there. Not enough eye yeah. pop. There. Come on, get your eyes bold, mate. <laughs> uh, 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 they can't see that in the audio vision. Lion King. Ooh, oh, but yeah. all the Disney yeah. ones are a shameless Ooh. cash grab. I hate them. I, I've heard they've done them all because it's to do with copyright and losing mm. the rights to them. That's that. why they're doing them live. But that being said, they're almost all of them are crap, yeah. in my opinion. I don't think a single one of them's good. No, I agree. Um, my little girl, my missus, actually love all of them. They saw The Little Mermaid. They saw Beauty and the Beast. Um, I know Lilo and Stitch is coming, apparently, as a live action. Moana's yeah. coming as a live action. Uh, there's That's just no need that long. for it. That's, That's new. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, but there you go. And Moana 2 has been announced now, by the way, which looks quite cool. Uh, animated or live? Animated with The Rock and all the original but they'll make characters. A live I do version like, of it eventually. I do like Moana. I like the, the film, but I don't want to see mm. a live one. I guess they'd have The Rock. Maybe they're doing it so The Rock is still relevant and muscly enough that he could actually play Maui <laughs> in real life. <laughs> but, um,. No, you're right, and especially with The Lion King. I dislike The Lion King. I just didn't see any requirement for it to have been done in the first place. Yeah. Um, I didn't like yeah. the little bit of story changes that they threw in there. The original film it was something I grew up with as a child. I remember getting it Christmas Day. We saw it at a friend, family friend's house. We watched it, and I fell in love with it, and I asked for it that Christmas, and I got it on VHS that Christmas, and it was those glorious times that if you went into the shop and bought something on VHS, you might get a free gift. Woolies, it was always a poster, but WH Smith, sometimes it was a T-shirt or an actual item. And in this case, I got a Simba hot water bottle. Showing your age <laughs> And there. I... Th- I loved it. It was amazing. It had the I can even now thinking about it, that that rubber smell of a hot water bottle in this kind of skinned Simba. <laughs> oh my god. We still have hot water bottles. We've got hot water bottles here, use them all the time. I think they're just a little bit dangerous. <laughs> I think Yeah, I guess. Disney knows that they can slap their name on anything these days and people will see it and it'll turn a profit. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. I mean, I'm waiting for them to remake Toy Story. I know they're doing Toy Story 6 now or five. Lord. No, Toy Story 5, Why? isn't it? Sorry, not 6. Oh, uh, exactly. They they're meant to have ended nicely. it on Toy Story 4. <laughs> Apparently, to- well, they ended it. Uh, gee, everyone says they really love Toy Story 3. I didn't like it. Toy Story 4, I really liked, and I'm of- I'm often in the minority on that one. But they ended both of them fairly well. So, actually, you know, Toy Story 3, it ends with the toys going off to the little girl. Toy Story 4, it ends with them kind of being... Either way, fine. Toy Story 5, apparently, is going to be... Yeah, they they separate, but in a a happy way. But apparently, Toy Story 5 is Andy has children, and he's looking to find his old toys to give to his children. Right. So he's got to steal them off that little girl he gave them to. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, he's probably... Yeah, go and donkey punch a couple of them and, and steal them back. But it's, it's going to be pretty hard seeing that uh, Woody has disappeared off with Bo. So how are you going to go yes. about finding that? Yeah. It's just, as you say, it's a dirty, dirty money grab. On the topic of remakes and remasters that are controversial at best. <laughs> yeah. I and quite a few people I know are big fans of Godzilla. And ah, we've yes. had it good. King of Monsters was pretty much universally loved. But unfortunately for me, the Godzilla I grew up with was Godzilla 1998. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have shown that to my little girl and she loved it. it so is, that is her experience of Gojira. It's yeah. uh, an American Godzilla that um, I think is, <laughs> like, it's skinny, incredibly bipedal, uh raptor looking thing yeah it, it's and a t-rex on steroids <laughs> half of the movie is just the alien egg plot from alien but with godzilla <laughs> yeah it is yep. isn't it yeah and but they it even, is so good and they even end it on a cliffhanger and never went anywhere with it no. yeah like, no. never 
But while I do love the movie, there is a good argument for there being absolutely no right for it to be anything to do with Godzilla because it has nothing in common with most Godzilla. What, what was the plot point for the guy who looks at worms being the he- the hero? I do he was not to do with know. radiation, I think. Right. He'd previously okay. done, and that's why he'd been. He'd got something wrong, which is why he was drummed down to go and dealing with worms and something along those lines, if I remember right. right. But you know, the the new Godzilla films, I'm very fond of all of them. Um, the Kong versus Godzilla, I enjoyed. I haven't seen Kong uh, Godzilla minus one yet, but apparently that is a absolutely phenomenal. Um, but they've done a really good job with them. Not not only do they look amazing, and there's periods in those uh, new Godzilla ones where the technique and the graphic styling they've done almost makes it look like Godzilla is a model and it looks kind of really familiar to some of the later Toho stuff. It, it's just really nice. I really who, like them. Who was it who posted the picture on the Discord of what length Godzilla's legs would be if he was actually stood in the ocean? Have you seen those? <laughs> I've not seen <laughs> that, no. <laughs> it's just like when he's actually stood in the ocean, he's like up his knees, but actually <laughs> his legs would be massively miles long to be <laughs> reaching the bottom of the I'd ocean. I never even he's... thought about that until you he's said that. He's just desperately like doggy paddling with his legs to keep his yeah, to speak, like... <laughs> I've just seen the but, picture. But I, was yeah. very, I was going to say, yeah, is it just like an owl? So you see all those pictures of those owls, and, and when just, they lift up their up legs, they've it's... just got these long little skinny yeah. legs underneath. <laughs> <laughs> right, I... we need some. Well, sorry, Jay, one more minute and we better move on. Yeah. <laughs> I think that if we get remakes and they are as much of an upgrade to the previous content as King of Monsters is to Godzilla, then we are good. Yeah. I've heard they're really good. I've not seen them yet, but they're on the list of ones I want to watch, those new ones. Yeah, definitely they, watch them. Really good yeah. remaster from me was the motion picture for Star Trek. They remastered it for the 40th or how, whatever the anniversary was, and they did a really good job on that. Really good yeah. job. And yeah, oh, Matt just shared a picture you, you of Godzilla farting the in picture. the water to keep himself buoyant. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Okay, let's move on. Remember the shit that I bought? Remember? Did you give it a thought? Remember? It's probably tat, that's all. Woo! We have guests, which means it's do you remember time? And you probably guessed that because I played the music beforehand. Um, Okay, so Matt, Jay, very quickly the rules for Do You Remember? Although I know you listen, so you should know the rules. If me and Rob haven't thought about an item inside of the year, you get a point. If we have thought about the item within a year, you don't get a point. And if we look at the item and go, what the fuck is that? You don't get the point at all. Really simple rules. Uh, so I know you hopefully have both both well, blah, 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 try that one again. You have hopefully both bought something to the show, and then mm-hmm. me and Rob have a little something for you two. Yes, yeah, us you versus remember. you essentially. So you two can be the first and this, you know, the start of the next season. Do you remember to bring two points to the table for the not Tom and Rob team? Yeah. So, so you'd like to go first, Jay? You want to go first? Ladies first. Uh, Sure, why not? If you can find it. So, obviously, my childhood is two decades separated from everyone else's here. <laughs> so, <laughs> not exactly. Thanks for the up, reminder. <laughs> but uh, I brought a horrible histories book that Ooh. I absolutely forgot I had. Oh, nice. So. I'm not going to award you a point from my side because we are massively avid fans of horrible histories in this house. Uh, Kay loves them. We're going to Warwick Castle on Saturday and they've got horrible histories there. And through Cheap Show, I've also got um, Ethan Phillips, who is a actor in horrible histories as a friend and literally he had a post a couple of hours ago that was on my feed so it's like ah unlucky how about you rob uh i obviously remember it and the guys that did the series have also got a series a, a series where they play ghosts BBC like a ghosts, new series. Yeah. yes yes and i have though i haven't seen it i saw 
um, a documentary thing about it on YouTube a few months ago. <laughs> so that would have spoiled it anyway. Although I haven't specifically, you know, don't specifically remember the horrible histories, but it made me think of that because they're explaining what they did before this. Horrible so it's like me who didn't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so Jay, zero points, I'm afraid, for you. It's a great item, though. It's a great item. It is a great item with Rattus Rattus. I'm just, yeah, great show. Brilliant, brilliant show, whether you're an adult or a kid. Um, well, we'll do one next, TJ, you, you or me. Uh, go on, you go, Rob. You go. I have brought with me a very special book as well to my life, and that is Bart Simpson's Guide to Life. Do you guys remember back when The Simpsons was way more massive than it is now? Yes. Uh, the memorabilia and one stuff moment. that they brought out. Has he got one next <laughs> thing? I hope he has, because this is... This is like top tier Simpsons uh, stuff. Is, oh, you see, you've got the hardback version. I had the softback version when I yeah, grew up. Yeah, this is the hardback one, mate. Original release, hardback. It's basically just a book of absolute nonsense. It is. Here, isn't go. It? Here you go. I just opened it up to people can't see it, but Bart Simpson's dream pet. Yeah, which is. Up. Basically, them ripping the piss out of um, oh. Homer's design of the car. <laughs> what on earth he is going is on here? Duff Man or something. No, I've got the actual movie poster. Oh, have you? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> the full size one. Oh, oh excellent really stuff. Excellent stuff. Um, so, I think, Rob, I think, how are we going to judge yours? Because I would say the book as a very specific book is quite book, difficult to be i'd like to say though the particular book because i think people who were into simpsons this was one of the i'm sure this is one of the kind of first real things they brought out and people our age would know this book yeah fair enough I feel like. okay um well i again, didn't know that I've... book existed and there's that rule I was literally just going to bring yeah, up. Yeah, if that you... it instantly means we don't get the point. Because if you don't know it exists. I know The Simpsons, nope. I don't know that specifically. You don't know this So book. Rob is a double zero as well. Out for a duck on that. So Matt, yeah. your turn. I have mine, but I can't find it. But I've got a picture of it. Do you remember that? Pandemon... <laughs> there you go. Pandemonium on the PS1. Yes, um, I do. And I watched the, a YouTube me, video, the video on it. quality is awful, so I'm going to have to look that up. That's okay. Uh, While Rob's looking up, I watched a video on it literally the other day. uh, Saturn Lord... uh, So what is his name? Uh, Saturn Lord X on YouTube. And he did a video of some of the most popular platformers and Pandemonium was on there. Oh my gosh, I remember this. Yeah, you would have got you would have got a point off me. I I am... So, right. So it's going to be a zero from me, Matt, but a one... At the moment, from Rob. So, oh, so he gets a point. For, okay, so we're not because normally the rules are we both have to. Yeah, I know, but I think we should. In this case, if we're doing it with guests, I think it should be uh, an amalgamated score. So at the moment, Matt and Jay, your score out of four is one, <laughs> uh, because you could have got one point from each of us, uh, and our score is zero at the moment. So we're doing brilliantly there. So my one, my wife headed over to her mum's the other day because we regularly get messages saying (laughs) her mum is going up in the loft and there is a lot of stuff still in the loft that is Gemma's and she wants it out. Oh, I can kind of understand that one. And now they, and I bet by they, I mean my wife and her brother, both worked for Sainsbury's as their first kind of part-time job and then job after that. And uh, which meant they got hold of some of those free things that, you often don't get hold of because you go to Sainsbury's at late afternoon and they're already all gone. Well, now you know why. Well, these are the original Pringles. Uh, if I pull that back a little bit, these are the original Pringle holders that they released back in the 90s. So you could have these in your lunchbox with a <laughs> handful of little Pringles and these are the special <laughs> shiny Christmas editions. The little plastic ones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, I know those. It's like, Ooh, it's sparkly and shiny. Aren't they great, yeah. yeah. These are really great, actually. And uh, these have never been opened either since the 90s. We've just got Damn. this bags worth of them. <laughs> <laughs> and ridiculously, they're on eBay at the moment for like up to 30 quid a piece for some of these special edition ones. <laughs> Someone's just gone to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 <They're> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes, that is my do you remember? Do you remember the Pringles lunchbox crisp holders? I do. I used to have them in school. Haven't thought about them in years though, but yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, well that that brings us up to one all and Jay, what's your stance on it? Before my time, man. I, I think they are when they came yeah. <laughs> when they came out. That's fine. We will hit a zero <laughs> yeah. on that, which means it is a one all and we can't do a tiebreaker because how the hell would we do that? So, uh, it's just points on the hand. board, mate. Closest thing to uh, hand. My hands are in my lap. Hang on, that's a bad thing when you consider behind me is my shelves of goodness. Rob, fill the dead air. Oh, well, all my stuff is Pokemon stuff. Like, I've got like a sleeping Eevee here. Oh, that's um, so cute. I do have a... Yeah, this is not what I'm showing, but I do have... Yeah, I've got um, nice. SideQuest Mark on the Discord. He gave me loads of these little things. They're screen... Like, you wipe your screen with this little oh, beanbag, so but useful. it's got loads of little sleeping Pokemon. Oh, it's perfect size, isn't it? Yeah, and I've got one of the... That's a Growlithe that came out of T's advent calendar. Oh, what, the disappointing advent <laughs> yeah, calendar? Yeah, I've got Gengar. <laughs> oh, no, that's nice. Obviously, the people that are listening can't see these things, Rob. Yeah, so it's just a They're very Gengar. cute little bottles. They are. We seem to have lost Matt, so whatever's first comes to hand doesn't seem to be first comes to hand. I think I'm going to disqualify Matt at this point. This is getting He's now a... hunting. He's I don't think he keeps disappeared. anything... In his defence, while I have a mountain of clutter on my desk, I don't think he keeps... I think he's tidier. Uh, fair enough. Well, as you can no. see behind me, these are my shelves of fun behind me, and that's all the stuff that I've grown up with that I've collected over recent times. And for me, the first to hand was this fucker. <laughs> I, who, who? The fuck is that? Yeah. Backwards a bit. We and spoke about that on the podcast. We have, and basically what they were were this. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> they what were, were they called, called again? jibber-jabbers. That's the jibber-jabbers, yeah. Oh, uh, I have heard of those. Oh, But wicked. I don't think I've ever seen one before, so I don't think it counts as... Does that count as remembering? Yeah, oh, it's difficult. That's a difficult one to kind of accept there. But come on, Matt, what have you bought? And then we'll, we'll go uh, on to decision. No, I put it back because you said, yeah. I had like oh, a... I brought some... <laughs> I was rummaging. <laughs> you know what, no, stuff it... As much as I love having a jibber jabber and whipping out my jibber jabber, which just sounds absolutely <laughs> atrocious. Oh, oh, it's not just Rob that I make spit drink everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Jay. That's good. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> um, ooh. What have you got? That looks like that's that's an an that looks like an action re that, that is looks an, like an action oh, replay card. It for... is an Aichi. F oh. The specific brand. It's hell if I know. These used to plug. One end into your DS and the other yep. end into the game cartridge and let you put god mode, cheats, infinite items on any game. We've brought one of those, I think, to Do You Remember? We did. We, um, you bought, bought it one. and it was... Uh, the, I can't the, remember. The original Game Boy one. Yes, that was it. You bought it for the, the original, original Game Boy. Original game Boy yeah. um, you know what? I'm just going to leave it as the tie break because it's it's too close to to judge i think but that i think that's the best item <laughs> <laughs> see i showed this to matt honest. and brought it up and he didn't know what it was so i was like oh shit is this i too, think you would have got a point because reason? we both know and i'm pretty sure that would have been over a year now or yeah well it would we have been that. because it's been so a, that a year been a of point, episodes I yeah i think that would have been well it would have been two points Ooh. Ah, drat. <laughs> shouldn't have listened to matt oh well I... oh well <laughs> <laughs> Right. All of the all of the uh, audience and guests can now blame Matt that their score isn't three. Boo. Okay. Moving on. Roleplay roulette. Did you like the jingle? That <laughs> is. <laughs> An absolute disgrace that you've done that to the nightmare theme tune. Ten minutes that took. So, <laughs> what you just heard, I wasn't sure. I, I thought I might have been able to explain it before the the uh, jingle came on. So we're going to play something now called Role Play Roulette. And what this is is I have created a D and D scenario. Uh, it's more akin to. Um, 
choose your own adventure books. You know, you'd, you'd read a story, turn to page. The story's already there, but, you know, a kind of choices. But those choices are going to just be defined by dice rolls. You're going to have scripts that you say, but your characters have not yet been decided. So I've got four characters that I've written for. I'm going to, I've got a little um, thing on Google here that's just going to roll some dice and it will pick who's who on the list. I'll okay. send you the script. I have to very quickly just do a quick copy and paste of everyone's names in the scripts <laughs> to put their names and write things. It's all coloured. Jays will say Jay, Matt will say Matt, TJ will say TJs. Um, I'll explain it to you. You say your script part and I will play the scene out. We'll have, let me get the my rules up. Right. It's a little bit convoluted, but it will <laughs> kind of make sense when we're going through. You guys don't really have to do much other than just enjoy it. <laughs> but I've got to say, anything <laughs> Rob creates, he does always message me saying, it's a little bit convoluted. I think we need to have words about this at some point, Ooh. but that's fine. That would so, never know how that felt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just, uh, I've got to open a new window because... So uh, you, yeah. you're going to send this over to Discord now, are you? So we can. I oh, will. I'm going to continue reading the rules. I, I want to give them the oh, script okay. at the last minute. I've got to edit it as well, very quick, because so we can be talking <laughs> while I edit everyone's names. <laughs> oh my god! Um, Live editing as well. This is. Well, I have to. I haven't rolled yet, and I don't want people to think I'm making it all up. Ah, so, fine. Okay. Right. Hang on. Right, Am I safe thing. to open it? You can. Okay. You can open the. You can open both scripts if you want, but because it led it as I'm doing it. Okay. Fine. Because uh, you're what doing it live. So the way this works is I'm going to roll the dice. You're going to pick and it will pick characters. I'll tell you who the characters are and what the weapons are. And then as we go through, there'll be a battle and I'll do some rolls for you. And they'll have critical success, success, partial success, partial failure, failure, crit failure. And then I'll tell you what happens. And then you can ro I'll tell you what your character's doing. And then you can do a little bit of role play to embellish that for me which okay. would be quite cool to so get your role play action going on. And if you do damage, I'll roll for damage. My enemy has health points and I have two endings, whether you kill him or whether you do not. Ah. And then I have scripts based on that too. So whilst it is kind of role play, it's, you know, it's really just an interactive script and we're just going to pretend. <laughs> okay. I can't, you know, it's just, it's. I had not much time, <laughs> as always, with these things, and we don't have three hours to do a whole D and D Quite. battle. Quite. What you guys took an hour to open a door the other day, so I don't think. Um, <laughs> yes, I heard I about that one. I think twenty minutes to kill a boss here isn't too bad. <laughs> Fair enough. So let me just do some clicks. Click, click, click. Yeah. Clickety, click, click. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Right. Hang on. We're holding on. Dead air. Some dead air. I know, it's I... terrible, isn't it? I hate do, dead air do, as well. And do, then I'm trying to do, think we can just design. cut. We can do, just do. cut this bit because I have to do some typing. Do, 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 oh, fair do, enough. Do, uh, do, I'm going to be do, do, this on a plane, okay. by the way. That's going to be fun. Oh. Right. So, the four characters. Yes. So, Jay, you are playing a man named Julian Convictus III, the betrayer <laughs> of Demomora. That is your character's name. And you have got two poisoned knives. So just remember in your head, you've got two poisoned knives. Okay. Have you changed that? Because the version I've got here is... Yeah. I yes. know. Uh, you need to go on and get not the one I sent you. Go on the server and get the one off the server. Okay. Which is the one that says D&D &D with Matt and J dot doc X. Yep. You yeah. You need to open that. The same with the scripts. The scripts I've updated since you said, because you said you didn't want to see them. So I changed them. Oh, right. Okay. I see. You, why? Okay. Rob. We are yeah. having words about this. What? You do not put the character's name and then put below it the name and what they are. You put the person's name at the top and then you say no, what they I are below No, because I just rolled it, it TJ. <laughs> I'm just fight, typing fight, it now. Fight, oh, fight, fight. right, okay. Right, <laughs> typing right. it literally now. <laughs> oh, God Shut damn it. TJ. <laughs> Look, I want to fight tonight, okay? I've had a bad day. I'm having right. it. TJ, anyway, you're playing a female character called Claudia Twilight, the Defiler of Nevermore. Mm. And you have a large pole arm. Kinky. We sound very I, evil already. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I don't... Well, you've seen me play d, &D. I don't play nice characters. <laughs> <clears throat> no, you do not. Uh, I'm playing a guy named Atticus Batunga, the commander of the Force Legion of Krakal, and I have a greatsword. <laughs> and Matt 
you get the last one. Unfortunately, you're playing a man called Dwayne Dingleberry and you're a janitor <laughs> and you have a broom. A janitor so, with a broom. A janitor with a broom, so sorry about that. The joy Wait, of the yeah. dice. The joy Wait, of the dice, eh, TJ? Wait. Oh, dear. Right. We're gonna get so, yeah, we're going to put voices on. I'm going to now send you script one. Okay. Do not read it until oh. I tell you to read it. I've changed everyone. Everyone has their own colour, has the names, like your actual name ahead of it. Right. As I said, don't read ahead. It will spoil the fun. Let me get all my windows back up because I've just closed all my windows. Okay. So... We find our heroes at the precipice of destiny itself, a moment in time with but two outcomes, victory or defeat. For hours they have been locked in a bloody battle with the last of the commanders of the Orc Legions of the Eternal Twilight, the vicious Germanus Gomesh. Finally together they have pushed him back, whittling down his defences, and this now is his last stand against the glorious righteousness of our heroes. So, open up your scripts, please. I okay, I've got the script, script open. DJ's in I'm red. Play I'm playing a woman. You're playing a woman, so put your voice on, mate. So you're in red, Jay's in blue, I'm in black. I also do the narrator, and Matt, you're in pink. Where <laughs> did you put the script? I, I don't see a script. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's in Discord. I yeah, put it's in Discord, Discord, the chat in Discord. Oh, I have Discord open, man. I don't see it. Yeah, no. In our Ooh. chat in Discord. Nope. No after, such thing. After, your, after the chili peppers you wrote, I dumped it in there. Nope. Um, um, no. Oh, well, this is fun. Why is it there for me and not for you guys? Did you hit enter? Is it grayed out? Now I've pressed enter. Ah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you just drag and drop it. Why can't you just drag it? Why can't oh. you also do something on this podcast that just works? <laughs> Here we go. No, well, at least I knew you hadn't read it. Right, everyone open it up. Okay, don't read ahead. <laughs> Particularly okay. Matt, don't okay. read ahead. Put right. your voices on. TJ's the only woman. <laughs> uh, let's go. Thanks, darling. Do you have yeah, something you need to tell, Matt? <laughs> Come, my comrades in arms. <laughs> now we must fight one last time. <laughs> now we must bring an end to the scourge of the Orc Menace. Once and for all. Yes, to battle, to glory, to victory. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Glory. Oh, glory really does suit you. I really look, do look, you really do look so handsome in those robes, Atticus. Um, well, uh, of course, I do do Pilates. And your hair is so beautiful, long, shiny, and your skin so cold and smooth. He's going to skin you and you just rock. Come on, it. spit it out, Matt. Spit the words out. <laughs> May I touch it? Um, well, I, I do moisturise. Oh, and you gotta get it. Julian, when, fucking hell, Rob. Julian, you do the, this is all over. Wait. His name's Julian. Can you do a Mort impression by any chance? Oh, God. <clears throat> I don't... Hmm. Never uh, mind, never mind. Well, yeah, Jay is playing Julian here. He's so lost me on that one, but... Uh, um. Anyway. Oh, Julian. Julian, when this is all over, you and I, we must... Oh. <laughs> Silence, peasants. This is no time for your tomfoolery. We must finish this battle. All that we know and love is at stake. Together we can penetrate his defences and strike a final blow. <laughs> oh. Come on, Matt. <laughs> oh, penetrate. Blow. You're doing well, jammer man. <laughs> Concentrate. Long have your <laughs> skirt. <laughs> Defiled our crops, and worse, they've defiled our women and children. Oh, give an half a chance, I'd like to defile me. <laughs> I am so glad I of all people did not get that part. <laughs> oh, give an half a chance. Come on, Matt. It's a bit Come out, on. Matt. Deep breaths Come on, now. Push this through, is, Matt. Rob Come on, this is serious. This is a serious, serious, fan serious, thing. Is a serious yeah, podcast. Is a fan <laughs> thing. Where we're doing some serious role play, okay? Read your lines. <laughs> Wrong kind of role play, oh. mate. <laughs> oh, give it half a chance. I'd like you to defile me, my lady. May I say, you smell absolutely divine. Even all that blood and viscera of your plump, helpful friends. Get a hold of yourself, Rob, these are fool. thoughts you keep to yourself, <laughs> <laughs> It is at that moment 
The nefarious Jermaine Gomesh unsheathes his great battle axe and raises it to the sky. That's the only thing he unsheathes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Foul humans, I have seen your lands. I have walked them, crushed it under the boots of my legions. I have tasted the fruits of human toil and found them wanting. I'm going to cough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> impressed. I was not expecting that out of you, Rob. Yeah, hang on. Then out of ten. It's still got more to go. <laughs> <clears throat> this world belongs to me now. Your victories against the legions are nothing but ripples in an ocean of my power. And what was the baddie in? Um... I'll get you next time, Gadget. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, as he glow. pulls, <laughs> as he pulls in a huge breath of air, his eyes glow bright in the darkness, and with one large gust of his breath, blue flames engulf his blade. He lowers his shoulders to our heroes and charges at them in full speed. I am now going to roll for everyone's initiative. Yeah, I get to say it once. Oh, so. well done. <laughs> TJ gets 13. Okay. Matt gets 10. Jay, 16. Oh, I get 3. That's nice. And he gets 9. Right. So... Jermanis uh, rushes at, the, at our heroes. Although he is fast, he does not quite have the pace to get to you before three of you get to react. So what I'm going to do now, the way this is going to work is I'm going to roll and I've got words based on what kind of success it is. And I've got a little bit of story. I'm going to say you what it is. And then you can just elaborate a bit on it. Yeah, sound good? Okay. Because I've got to fit it in with my ending, so you have to kind of do what I say based on the things. It all makes sense to me. You this guys are sounding have to more understand. and more like one of your fantasies. <laughs> so Jay got a success. So he's basically as he's rushed you, you. He just kind of you just kind of managed to dodge and get underneath him, pulling out your blades. You slice across his stomach. What would you be saying? Do you reckon whilst this is happening, Jay? Have at thee, foul demon. Soon it okay. shall be us destroying your territories and your women and your children. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Love it. And you have done, I'm clicking your damage, you did 10 damage. 2d6. Your knives with your success, you did 10 damage. TJ's next. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, you got I've, partial I've, failure. I've already okay. forgotten what voice I did for this. So. so you're doing a woman, so you got partial failure. So basically you've seen him receive his stomach wound and you're taking that moment yourself to launch at him. You bring your pole arm round to your side and you leap into the air, swinging it towards his legs, hoping that you're going to swipe him or to see. Well, this is a partial failure. So although you do hit him, you basically don't actually do very much damage to him and he doesn't stumble so i'll roll your damage which is only going to be 1d4 and you've done two damage Yay. so you did hit him but you didn't trip him so matt i'm gonna roll so what do you say at that moment so, uh, so let me react it out all of us oh my goodness look at the size of that gash oh, <laughs> i think i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna go for it hey yeah oh fuck it i'm going home <laughs> Fantastic. Right, Matt's next. Sounded more like fucking Mrs. Goggins at this point now. Come and on, brilliant. Matt. Matt's Come just crit. Matt, Matt has crit failed. That What a oh. shame, Matt. You crit failed. <laughs> so, Dwayne, you are running towards Germana, screaming with your high pitched, whimpering voice that barely even registers into his brain. He's got really no concept you even exist, <laughs> let alone you're in a fight with a broom. So as you're running to work towards him, you actually stumble. You lose your grip on your bo in your broom. The broom slides effortless, slides across the floor and just knocks him up by his feet. And you are now prone, face down, and unable to move. So what are you? What's happening? What's? How do you act that out for me? <laughs> oh shit! I can fall over again. I tell you what, mate. <laughs> you can come and dominate me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so it is Germanus's move. And he gets a success. So let me for? just pick his one because I've got I'm a few open. to choose from. I'm open. <laughs> yep. Okay, so he looks down at the ground and sees Dwayne's broom at his feet. And he notices Dwayne lying face down in the dirt. Cheeks are spread <laughs> so wide, his head to one side, <laughs> picks up his broom 
and he's making his way over to you. He's one burning axe in one hand and a broom in the other. Not the he's broom. laughing at your immobile body face down in the mud. <laughs> So I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna try and let you see if you can dodge his attack here. The <laughs> athletics he is that what you'd be? Is a dodge? Or... <laughs> sure, go for it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's not a very good roll. Right. It's a fail. <laughs> <laughs> so with a useless whimper, you try to struggle, but with one hard thrust of his arm, he has shoved the handle of the broom right up your asshole. I think you might. I don't know if that counts as a win to that particular character. So, what, to act that out for me. You've just had a broom shoved up your ass, Matt. Oh, I ain't had anything that hard up there for about two months now. I count that as a win. <laughs> just, just, oh, just two months. Hey, we got carrot culture. You know, Matt, hello, what are you doing? <laughs> who are, who are uh, there, my darling? Who are you going to bring you come by the hoster? <laughs> yeah, and I've got for a, a success. So, with all this happening, so I'm last... So I get a success here. So Atticus, even though he's slow to react to all of what's happening, <laughs> it looks like actually that's been in the benefit of the team because while well, Germanus is too busy thrusting a pole up, you know, a broom handle up of <laughs> Dwayne's backside, he's left his back open to attack. <laughs> now so he's sword shoved up his. He's getting hold, he's grabbing hold of his two handed greatsword, charging, and I'm just going to roll. That's 11 damage. So. As I'm running towards uh, towards Germanus, two hands, great sword to my side, swing it straight at his neck, and basically what happens with that damage? He's dead. Germanus' head comes clean off of his shoulders. Purple blood instantly sprays into the air, covering Atticus and Dwayne in warm orc blood. As the head slams to the ground and rolls slightly to one side, Germanus' lifeless body stays stood for a moment swaying from side to side to eventually fall onto its front twitching and its still beating heart pumps blood into the mud so that means I have to give you the victory script uh, so right, we have a victory as well. let me go over to here which is the one I've labelled number two I've pressed enter this time yeah, yeah so yeah, same again it. so it's actually J to go first one second while I pull this and up. When you've loaded it up. Boom, boom, boom. Victory at last! We have avenged our families and brothers in arms! Truly, this is a blessed day. Tonight we shall drink and feast to our glory. Yes! The feast shall be the greatest the world has ever known! Ha ha! <laughs> it's Mickey Mouse. Atticus kneels down beside Dwayne. You fought well, peasant. This day shall be remembered in the songs of our children and our children's children. It will be forever sewn into the tapestries of the histories of our peoples. Now, allow me to remove your weapon from your person. Oh, oh no, darling, it <laughs> It is scratching an itch. Pegs by an commander. Scratch that one off the old bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> as the sun rises over the distant hills bathing our heroes in the warm orangey glow not only does it herald the dawn of a new day but the dawn of a new world for all those that dwell upon it so i'm gonna ask you both can i have a job as a script writer on <laughs> <laughs> bold of you to assume any of our chaos is scripted <laughs> <laughs> I'd say go for it. We get, we get everywhere much faster if it was. So, do you want to admit anything, Rob? No. Yeah, this seemed a little specific, my guy. Just a mm. wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> there was no dice. I wrote all that. I just wanted Matt to say some terrible things. Yeah, I gathered. <laughs> Matt, the Chitty incident hasn't been forgotten. <laughs> it will never be forgotten. <laughs> Good. I had our hairdresser come this evening, and her three or four colleagues at the pod, uh, her hairdressers, have told her make sure you ask the podcast bloke about the chilies. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, don't worry, I got my own back. I made her suck my black death, but <laughs> what? Uh, okay, <laughs> moving on, moving yeah, on. Andy, moving Rob, on. you suck my black death as well. Come on. <laughs> Oh, have you already had that really sour candy? We have yeah, had that really sour Damn candy. Damn it, we were going to yeah. send it to you to torment you further. Yeah, no, no. It's we, disgusting. We've got it from Mr. Sims, although apparently Mr. Sims does do Black Death Blue Raspberry flavour. Oh. So I'm tempted to get that because I quite like them. I like sour stuff. 
the jury's out on whether you copped out by crunching on the the cells. Oh, I've smacked. had another one. I'd say it was a cop out. Mm. Oh, fine. I'm going to do a video of me doing it, and I'll just prove the point. Then, okay, <laughs> like, let's have a bit of music. Who's that? D and D monster. And it's the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. <Yay! laughs> Role play roulette. <laughs> It's hard to tackle over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a funny one. And it's time for the Channel 84 Kids Show Knockout. And that's not actually the name, so I got it it's wrong. Not, it's got it wrong the again. Channel 84 Nostalgic Kids Show Knockout, I think. Yes. I haven't got it written down in front of me. We haven't got a, a call sheet this week, and it's really throwing me. And well, now I'm flapping it, as well. Wasn't it the Channel 84 Variety Show Kids yes, Show Yes, you're right. Knockout. The Channel 84 Variety Show Kids Show Knockout. Yeah, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's, it. that's why it's terrible, because it's got show in it so many times. Okay, we have our four shows that we are talking about today, and I haven't got them in front of me, so give me two seconds while I quickly load them up, because prepared. Okay, so round one is, and just, uh, I know you guys listen, but to run through it, there are two TV shows, and we need to choose which one we're going to keep. And hopefully, after five more of these, we are going to be able to go into the quarterfinals and semi final. Mm -hmm. We still got a lot of the blimmin' first round to go on this. So, the first one we're going to talk about is Escape from Jupiter, and that aired on CBBC on Saturday mornings on Live and Kicking. And. The, opp the opposition is Are You Afraid of the Dark, which I believe was a CITV show. Uh, yes. Do either of you know either of those shows to start with? And Rob, that nope. includes you, I guess. Okay, that's a good start. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Jay, do you know any of them? Uh, I've heard of Are You Afraid of the Dark, but I've heard of it in context of a show I really like, which is Grizzly Tales for Grizzly Kiss. Yes. Which so is an absolute bagger. Exactly. So Are You Afraid of the Dark follows along from the books that were just like Goosebumps, the R.L. Stein books. Jason, yeah. um, and then, yeah, as you say, Jay, um, Grizzly Tales for Kids is another kind of series that they, it kind of ties into. So it was kind of the the best way to describe it, kind of X-Files, kind of silly children's horror, um, Crypt Keeper style stories but for kids and this, some kids it traumatized some it didn't <laughs> this was still going they it went 1990 to 2000 and then they did 2019 to 2022 they had modern series of it. and i bet they were crap compared to yeah the other ones. I, I don't know anything about the modern series at least yeah. for grizzly tales they made a cgi version at some point and it's so much it's so bad Oh, really? Right. Well, that, that, that doesn't surprise me. So, are you friends? I never watched it. I didn't watch Goosebumps either. I, that, that just never caught oh, my attention, really. I really uh, enjoyed both of them. Ah, OK. Well, you're going to be the best person to speak on this one, then, because the closest I've got to these were Indian Erie, Indiana, which we've discussed before. Yeah. Um, so, what are your thoughts, then, Rob? So, are you afraid what? of the dark? Why, why was it good? I just, well, I mean, I'm putting it good in comparison to the other one <laughs> that it's against right now. Um, I mean, Goosebumps, I feel, was a better series if I'm going to be choosing of, of the two in the same ilk. But, you know, I couldn't I couldn't specifically name an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark off the cuff right now. I couldn't. I couldn't no. actually even tell you what the theme tune is. I don't even remember what the theme tune is. But I remember it. I remember watching it. And that, that was the kind of things I like to watch, like Demon Headmaster. Oh, you know, those Demon kind Headmaster. Of, mm, those kind of things. I, um, I would enjoy watching. I wouldn't turn them over. I've got to say, I don't have a clue what the other show is. Oh, fair enough. Okay, well, very quickly, the Are You Afraid of the Dark? If you want a good or funny take on it anyway, dial up YouTube and look up John Tron, and he's done a two-part episode on Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, is he? And he just absolutely destroys it because of how bad the story is. But for kids, it was brilliant. Now, Escape from Jupiter is what the BBC did best, buying their shows from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> like around mm. the twist. <laughs> exactly. It was that era that the BBC basically just... But they still do, actually. They buy a hell of a lot of their stuff from um, Australia. But that's what Escape from Jupiter was. The premise of the story was they are on a mining colony on one of the moons of Jupiter, 
and the kids oh, fuck yeah, something yeah. up and the mine start well the kids don't fuck it up they're over mining and the moon starts to collapse and it's about their escape from the moon and they end up in a space shuttle with a handful of people and it's just it's about the escape and that's it and i remember watching several episodes it wasn't too bad it was very much of its era it wasn't wonderful are you afraid of the dark is probably a better show um, yeah, and that's what i'm picking fair enough um as both people that we've got on with us as guests don't know the shows uh we'll go to the public vote and the public vote also chose are you afraid of the dark with 75 percent of the eight votes being of are you afraid of the dark and two people voting for escape from jupiter so nice and simple we got it right for once two we... people are wrong brilliant <laughs> harsh but yeah you're wrong <laughs> but true uh, <laughs> The next match, I think, is going to be harder. The next match is the Wild Thornberries versus Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It's yes. not hard for me. Oh, shut up, we'll Bob. get to me afterwards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Clip that, everyone. That can be a text tone. Yes. Fire away. It's going to have to be Tim Curry all the way. Smashing. So, <laughs> Yeah, smashing. Uh, yeah, so the people that didn't know, Tim Curry did the voice of Nigel, the dad in Wild Thornberries. The very premises of Wild... Uh, premises? The premise of uh, Wild Thornberries is a young girl goes away with her parents and her sister. They're constantly going around the world exploring sort of things, I think it is, isn't it? I think they're uh, conversation. Uh, You've got a talking monkey as they? well. Yes, and they have a talking monkey. They then find some sort of cave-dwelling boy as well, who they somewhat adopt. Flea. Flea plays him. Yes. I'm just looking <laughs> at the cast list. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, it's a really weird casting, but yes, Flea plays the uh, the, the child. Um, and yeah, so that's the Wild Thornberries. It's a Nickelodeon cartoon and by the same people that did Rugrats, I want to say. Mm -hmm. It must be the art style. It, is. Gone. it has to be. They look so similar. And for that reason, I cannot choose it. When I was oh. a really young kid, the Rugrats annoyed the hell out of me. I hated it so much. <laughs> I realised that's surprised. And I How? did manage to catch the Rugrats Go Wild, which is a crossover between the two. Yeah, I've never seen that. That's on my list to watch because I think it's on Netflix at the moment, either or Paramount. And um, the Rugrats film was quite good purely because of the amount of adult jokes Ooh. in it. Oh. So... This is for the next one, but you were talking about remakes. Sabrina's yes. had a remake. It oh, has. dear. Oh, no. Mm. It has had remakes. Oh, about yeah. three or four years ago. I didn't mind, it's I didn't dark. mind them. Yeah, oh, I, I didn't mind them. Uh, yeah. So, first of all, let's go back to the nice. Sabrina the Teenage <laughs> Witch was Melissa Joan Hart. Uh, lots of teenage boys fancied her. Lots of teenage girls wanted to be her because of the whole witch side of things yeah. as well. <laughs> and um, the whole premise of it is she becomes a teenager. Her witchy powers become apparent and it's just the story of, of that. Typical teenage sort of soap come comedy show really, isn't it? All the bitching of high school eventually ending in university, which was a very weird kind of twist to it, I think. Um, and no, you're right. Then there was the remake, which is modern day and very is dark. Is it modern day though? Because when you look at some of the aspects of it, it's it's still very old school. It's None a bit of a mix. Phones. I think I might have remember. I think I kind of brought this oh. up to the missus when watching it. No one had a mobile phone, so I think no. Oh, maybe it's meant to be nineties the, based then. The dial up thing. Yeah, but then there were some bits of it that were modern. So it's one of those kind of bars yeah, those timelines. Kind of yeah. And I'm sure it was Sabrina that had this really weird... It was filmed really odd. It was all blurry around the edges. Sometimes mm. it was. Yeah, sometimes it was. Mm. Um, and everyone's complaining about it. But Tom, oh, you're forgetting the most important thing about the old school one. The taxidermy cat. Salem. Yeah, yes. exactly. I was going to the say Salem himself. Salem yeah. is bloody awesome. I loved that puppet. Just yeah. brilliant. Although there are, so we've got all of them on DVD because, of course, we do. And um, there are some of the earlier episodes. The first one they use is terrifyingly bad, and then they improved the puppet. And 
there's that point as well that you can tell there's episodes you watch and it's like ah oh, right they've got the real cat now and oh yeah it's a nice short short haired black cat as it trots across the uh across the living room two scenes later it, it walks across and it's a long haired black cat that's been shaved down a little bit <laughs> and it's just the constant changing of the real animal in it but See, there's so many <laughs> big names in it as well full confession i have never watched sabrina the teenage witch I have seen compilation videos of Salem sassing people on yes. YouTube. That is the only thing I've seen from it. But because I dislike the Rugrats so much, my vote has to go for uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Fair enough to you. Uh, Matt, which are you going to go for? Uh, Wild Thornberries or Sabrina? I think we know what your answer is going to be. Seeing you've yeah. already said it once. <laughs> I'd say it's going to have to be Thornberries because of Curry. Curry all the way. Okay. Rob, what is your choice? I didn't like the Wild Thornberries. Found it annoying. Oh. Uh, I think even if I watch it now, I'd probably find it annoying for minus. And I actually enjoyed Sabrina. It's not classically a show I think I would actually enjoy, but there was something about it that I did. Okay, and I'm going to go with Sabrina. So sorry, Matt, you kind of got overruled on that one. Um, I used to love watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch and it was just an enjoyable show and it was a 100% mark up on her previous show, Clarissa Explains It All which was shockingly bad um, which we'll talk about another time no doubt but uh, the public vote also went Sabrina the uh, Teenage Witch with 87% oh. of people choosing Sabrina over the 13% over Wild Thornberries. What I should possibly point out is they may be voting for the modern Sabrina at this point. <laughs> so yeah, I hadn't even thought about be. that. Um, but it's it's still three against one, so I'm happy with that. And we are at the end of the show. It's been up and down. We've had system failures. We've had dead air. We've had all sorts going on. But it has been. And I've got loads of questions I never asked. Oh, good God! Yeah, you never asked these questions. Get, right? Get we're too oh, busy doing God, all of this. Jesus! <laughs> I'm smashing the microphone around now as well. So God's angry sake. at me. We yeah. have been talking. It's not like we've just been sat here going, "Oh, what should we talk about?" Right, Rob. Two questions, quick fire. Go. Oh, two questions, but I've got more than two people. Okay, I've got, you got? all your a partial questions. essay from Karen here, and I've got <laughs> Flower and and Wolfie have both sent questions. Right, all three go. Oh, so there is a good, interesting one here, actually. Yeah, so Flower is asking you, what's your favourite Gertrude? Oh, oh. So, ex firstly, explain to people who haven't listened to all the different series of yours who Gertrude is and I? why that's a good question. I'll go for it. So, Gertrude came about from Call of Cthulhu as Toucan played this old rum, oh, old rum runner woman who was literally as old as dirt, had zero intelligence, and was basically just muscle. Could not fail a fighting brawl. D&D, &D, it was... Cap, who played the dwarf, who was a barbarian, again, low intelligence, all muscle. Season three, it's me playing Gertrude as a dumb super mutant, again, all muscle, no intelligence. Um, She's I've become kind of a channel mascot, a podcast mascot, rather. Yeah. Uh, I think every single season we do will have a Gertrude in it somewhere. Mm. She was, she, like, in Call of Cthulhu, Characters dying is extremely common. I went through about six of them that one season. <laughs> um, oh, yes. But Gertrude was so good, essentially, so useful that she just carried the entire like team, essentially, so often. Didn't Cartman or James kill her off with a grenade? Yes. Um, uh, because, yeah, of course. Yes, it was. was, did, oh, no, it was no, she died before then. No, did she die before then? Didn't her um, we'll have to go back. We'll have to go back and Cap was playing there. Cap, Cap was playing her brother, so I think she got shot and then he went absolute ape shit. But yeah, it she was such biased. a dependable character. Might be biased, but I'm gonna have to say I enjoy playing Gertrude, so I'm gonna say season three. I think no one can beat the original. Like Tukin's Gertrude was so iconic and so good. 
True. Like, his performance is the reason Gertrude is a continuing character in every single game we play. True. There you go. Wicked. Well, I think Flower's going to be pretty happy with that response. Wolfie's question was, I think you kind of mentioned this slightly before, so what's made you both get into TT RPGs in the first place? Why not? Mm-hmm. Bit of fun. Yeah, you can go for yours. I've, I've loved fantasy for ages. I've wanted to get into D&D for a while. I didn't have any real way to do it. Then again, Matt showed up with not D&D, but Call of Cthulhu, and, well, I'm all right with horror. So I figured I'd get into it there. So for me, it was a case of I listened to the Arkham Files, a very good podcast and one that we're friends with quite quite a lot now. Um, and it just kind of went, you know what? We could do this. It sounds like fun. Let's get a team together. and Yeah, it's, it is what it is now. Cool. I, I've got... The one from Karen, I'm just going to read it verbatim, okay? So, Karen, bless you. I didn't know how to shorten your question, so I'm just going to read exactly what you wrote to me. So, question for APOC. How do they deal with people playing with them that struggle to be creative and get into their parts and characters? I guess that as people go along, they get more into it, and by the end of a campaign, probably dread the final episode coming round because they'll miss it. But do they ever get anyone that struggles all the way through? Hmm. Uh, hmm. I, I, I'll start you. I, when we spoke before we came and joined you, I, I told you how TJ and I had never ever done any role play whatsoever. Yeah. And I felt I struggled at first to feel comfortable being a bit of an idiot, like I like to be, but in front of quite a few people who have no idea who they are, <laughs> and I'm not looking at them on because the, I, I don't think we had cameras up. No, no. Um, so, from my perspective, as somebody that has been that person, I just felt awkward in myself. Mm. Yeah, how do you, um, how do you deal kinda, with players that I can like that like that? I think we just kind of play through it, really. I mean, we have salvage units coming out really relative to now. Um, <clears throat> Flowers in that, and he even said to me at one point he got into the mode of listening rather than playing because he's used to doing that um that just took mm-hmm. a quick you know message for saying are you okay everything going all right um, and then he got really into it as you'll hear in the uh, later episodes i mean the only person i think that's really had some like trouble is i'd say possibly josh but then again even he has like massive leaps and bounds and strides of just pure character waffle which is perfect for what we do I think that's a tricky one. That I think we just kind of roll with it. We just go with it. What do you think, Joe? I think the only thing you can really do is, if you're the DM especially, is making sure that everyone always has something they can do. And if someone's hmm. new to TTRPGs, you might have to make it a bit more obvious what their options are. Um, just always making sure there's something they can engage with, something that can make them go, oh, my character can do this, or maybe I can do that, or I can try that. This is a solution I have to our problem. They'll make them get invested in what their character is doing. It's always at its worst when someone feels like they can't do anything or they're just stuck in the game. So making sure they always have options is probably the good one. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any questions, TJ? No, I've got no other. I've already asked mine, I think. Um, well, I'm, gonna, I'm glad I got through because I did keep asking everyone so many questions. So I've, well, I mean, I've got loads more from Simon. We could go on forever. I mean, do you want one of Simon's ones? Let's have one of Simon's <laughs> and then we'll, 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 we'll call it quick. They're not, they're not TTRPG related. Um, I could read all of them and you could pick one. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's play another game. I'm going to read four questions that he wants to know the answer. You can pick one. So... <laughs> his questions not mine who is the biggest narcissist <laughs> what's your most embarrassing memory if you could erase one thing from your past what would it be and have you ever had an inappropriate crush on someone <laughs> so there's your four questions mm. which one do you want to answer narcissist jesus that's a bit of a dark one um we don't have to answer all that over. One. don't forget he's king of garage 
<laughs> Jay, you got a preference you. on He's this one? He's going to hate you for that. I mean, I can't really answer the crush one. I am living the child life. I've never had a crush on anyone. So it would be a bit of a flat one for me. But other than that, I'm fine with any. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I, mean, <clears throat> I mean, I think we've all had that awkward crush at one point in life. Um, I think we've all been a bit narcissistic in life. <laughs> Okay, oh, no, I tell you what, I'll pick for you. Tell me something, an embarrassing memory. Let's go with that. <laughs> embarrassing memory. Let's have some fun. I've, I'm pretty sure I've said mine, the hospital one. That's yes. an embarrassing I've oh, said that. We've all shared embarrassing memories. If you remember yeah. rightly, Matt sent us ours and we put it up as a bonus episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we both talk about crapping ourselves as well. We have spoke about that on this. Yeah. So we've got plenty. So you two can give us an embarrassing memory. All right, off the top of my head, probably my stag do. I got absolutely plastered, and in the weather spoons we were in, I was having a drink, someone made me laugh, it went down the wrong hole, and then I proceeded to cover the entire booth we were in in about at least six inches of vomit. Oh. <laughs> oh. Including oh. My, my trousers, my top. The thing is, though, we just carried on. We... Uh, my wife um, came, dropped off a new pair of clothes. I got changed, and we just carried <laughs> on somewhere else. We got kicked Fantastic. out very quickly. That's the sign of a real woman. <laughs> She'll come out to her drunken man so, and just change his clothes and send him off again. <laughs> sticking with the similar similar ilk there, um, someone that me and Rob know. I won't use their real name, but their name rhymes with Mickey Brig. Will do. <laughs> Rob will remember it at some point. A name from a long time ago of the Hammers. But we went out for maybe my 20th, I think it was. And we went round town and we started in the Fleur de Lis, who used to do really dirty, cheap uh, cocktails. And they used to do cocktail jugs. And the reason they were so cheap was because the landlord used to pop over to Spain every other week and bring back really cheap booze illegally. And um, she drank at least two pictures of a cocktail to herself, said, let's go to the next pub, went to the toilet, vomited everywhere down the toilet, came back out said, right, I'm ready for more drinks now. And that that was our evening. <laughs> Off I we went for more drinks. So, yeah. That's a tactical chunder. That's what that is. Tactical yeah. chunder. <laughs> yeah. That is foul, Matt. That is a really good phrase. Don't tell I'm me you've never tried that. that. Yeah, you it's, throw up, it's, so you up the, it's, it's up there with the tactical shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was like a nuclear strike. There yeah. is another poo one, actually. There is another oh, yeah, one about it. Hold on to that one for another time. Get what I did there? Hold on. Oh, dear. Uh, go, uh, right, Jay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to show I... up. Don't want to participate? Dec- I don't blame you. <laughs> I lead a decently boring life, I think. I can't think of anything other than like the usual stuff where like in high school I went into the wrong class on exam days. You know, that mild kind of embarrassment. I can't really remember any time I fucked up so bad that I just felt shame utterly. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen soon <laughs> enough. Now that I've said that, I'm tipped in feet. But you know what? I will. I will let you veto your story for now. Then, and if you ever do discover one, we will invite you back on just to do your embarrassing story. <laughs> and just pop in, I, embarrass yourself, and leave. I will share one more from the annals of my goddamn archives, and it's another three hammers special. Um, when you worked at the Three Hammers, and if you ever went to be like team leader or any sort of upper role, you had to be in the kitchen behind the bar, be able to do the back office, and be you had to be able to do everything, basically. And that included food running as well. And we, it was a nice, quiet morning. And this is back in the day when you could buy a good one litre bottle of Bolt Blue from Sainsbury's, you know, that dirty Red Bull oh, rip-off, for about yeah. 69p. <laughs> and... um I was doing food running. I chugged about two thirds of a bottle in the kitchen because it was early morning. I think we'd been out at good old Snatchwood the night before, Rob. Oh, yeah. And um, <laughs> a terrible nightclub in St. Albans called Batchwood, um, which got a very terrible nickname, as you've just heard. And um, so trying to wake up, I chugged that bottle, took the people's meals out, and here's your meal, sir. Here's your meal, madam. <laughs> right in her face. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> and you. Can you imagine the smell that would have been as well? That I think horrible... I might have heard of that. Oh, you've just reminded me of something. Ooh, the one no, and is. only oh. type, like, for context, there's a guy, Matt and I know, he's a friend of ours, he's named Chester. He and Matt both fart, burp, <laughs> anything on mic, right? All the goddamn time. 
the one time I think I burped on mic and Matt clipped it. <laughs> Do I still have that you file? You rat bastard. <laughs> That's brilliant. Love it. I got. I just. I got two. He made it. A, you know, in statues. Discord, when you're in a Discord call, there's a sound alerts thing now. He made it a sound alert too. Oh, wicked! <laughs> <laughs> I know three. I've got three stories of statuary. Uh, one time, saw two people having sex uh, in the queue to get in. Excellent. Um, it's next to a golf course. They were in the uh, bunker. <laughs> of course, bunking um, up in the bunker. Another time, I was there with my cousin and. He pulled me to one side and goes, look down here, Rob, look down, look down the, do you remember TJ where the ice bar was? Yes. There was a little alleyway there and the staff, I think there was a staff entrance down there, two people having sex on the floor. Now this alleyway is next to the dance floor. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Literally, imagine being in a nightclub, busy nightclub, dance floor, turn the corner, people just having sex on the floor. <laughs> uh, I nice. went with a whole load of three hammers guys. I'll say his name. His name's Alby. He oh, good old Alby. <laughs> so mashed. And somehow upset the bouncers that they kicked him out. Well, he just went round the side, climbed the fence, and jumped into the beer garden and landed next to the bouncer and just kicked him out. Just, I was literally <laughs> the best story. I was, because it was him and Matt Tomney that were really, yeah. really smashed, and Albie's yeah. the one that got kicked out. <laughs> yeah. So she, li- she literally just sort of went, no, grabbed him by the collar of his <laughs> neck and just opened the gate next to him, just chucked him out again. <laughs> Genius. I Yeah, brilliant. Anyway, okay. It is the outro, or was meant to be the outro. Uh, APOC team, sell your wear, sell your podcast, tell the people where they can find you, how they can find you, and over to you. Yeah, we are the Appiant Cthulhu podcast. We are a TTRPG podcast. We do all sorts of random shit. One main story every season, but we do have cut-in episodes of various different things that I potentially find or get shown. Or that Jay puts into my direction. Um, you can find us basically on one. Twitter, because I'm not calling it X, as the Upanda Cthulhu. <clears throat> or you can join our Discord, which is in the APOC uh, Twitter and should be on the episodes as of the next one. Yep, we do one shots, playtests, the main story, and interviews of various different podcasters. Fantastic stuff. So, yep. yeah, we are on there. Make sure you check the metadata. We'll put all the links we can below there, including their Discord. Uh, so, yeah, go and find them. Otherwise, you can find us on all the normal social media channels. That's Twitter, that's uh, Threads, Blue Sky, Discord, Facebook, you name it, we're on there. And the easiest place to find us is channel84.co.uk, and all our links are on there, including channel84.co.uk forward slash Discord, which will take you straight to our server as an invite, and you can join our server using that really easy link rather than the ones that Discord give us. If you would like to talk to us directly, you can email either rob at channel84.co.uk or tj at channel84.co.uk. Or if you want to email both of us at the same time, send it to podcast at channel84.co.uk. Thank you very much for listening. It's been absolutely fantastic having you guys on the Thanks, show guys. with us. So thank you for coming on and bearing with us for this nearly two hours. And um, this will be up in for you guys in a couple of weeks. But for the people that are listening to it, we hope you enjoyed it. And then it wasn't too chaotic. (laughs) Love you. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the Channel 84 Variety Show. This station is now shutting down and we'll be back in two weeks. Excelsior.